Mike, with all the uh, tremendous advantages that we've experienced with R9, one of the things we're waiting for is still a little ways off in the future, i.e. your implementation of synthetic fission. Obviously, this is not something you do overnight. This is something you've really got to earn. Talk to us about the process of developing synthetic vision for an all-new platform. Right, Jim. So we've spent a, a lot of time really at the core level to uh, increase performance, really get as much out of the hardware as possible, out of the processor and the GPU that we're using to enable uh, three-dimensional synthetic terrain. And you can see here, it fits into our existing architecture. We designed the initial architecture around having synthetic vision and you still get all of the redundancy that you had in the past and all the ability to see all your other displays like you've had in the past. And I'm just going to step you through that. For example, if I want to change to a map, you notice the synthetic vision is still in the upper area, so you still have that ability. You have your horizon and, and that three-dimensional fly-through capability. But you also can see your map down below. And you also still have the ability to see your engines. And this just adds another layer of ability and ease of use to a pilot in this kind of situation. You can still get synthetic vision on the right display or where I'm showing you on the left display. Or you can still also get as an HSI down the bottom here too, as you can see. Or you can just completely turn off synthetic vision and get the blue over orange in this case. What are the issues that you're dealing with in regards to bringing synthetic vision to life, i.e. something that you know, looks like the quote-unquote real world? But what is it that you're looking for, both from a standpoint of information as well as the user experience? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we're looking for performance. It has to have a certain speed of update rate. It has to look lifelike. Um, we have to get all the, the posts uh, all nailed down in the terrain so when you're flying through it, it's not moving around. There's a lot of flight tests we do as well to make sure that it is giving you that you know, real-life synthetic feel for terrain. The hard part is the terrain. The other stuff that comes afterward is much more straightforward, and we've, you know, we don't have any issues or worries about doing that, things like the three-dimensional obstacles and things like that. You know, the real challenging part is to make this something that is safe and is easy to use and as realistic as possible. And you can see here, a lot of the time that we spent so far has been on you know, getting the texturing on the terrain correct or getting the shadows you know, realistic. Yeah, so those are the areas that we, we do spend a lot of time on, as with anything related to user interface from Avidyne. We do spend more time than, than uh, you know, the schedule really wants us to, but that's just the way we are, and, and we do uh, spend a lot of you know, effort on it. Now, another moment of freedom from Sirius Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. Well, one of the chief reasons for wanting synthetic vision is understanding the world around you, which you may not be able to see. In other words, what's a threat to you and what is it? What are the tactics that you're employing to be able to bring uh, hazardous terrain and hazardous uh, scenarios to the pilot's attention in a readable and immediate format? Right, so uh, what you don't see here is the, uh, the red and, and yellow TAWS uh, overlay on top of the terrain. Uh, that is something we've had working. Uh, we're not showing it here at the show because it's one of those items that is just not fully ready mm -hmm. to, uh, to show out to the public. Um, but in those cases, you're looking at the trajectory of the airplane and you know, the direction of flight as to you know, what the impact of the terrain is going to be and what color you change it. And there's um, ACs and uh, aircraft or advisory circulars out there um, for us to follow in, in that area related to synthetic vision as well as the, uh, the TAS overlay. Now, where is this terrain data coming from? What, are you, what do you start with and then what do you do with it? So to be honest, we're exploring different terrain databases at this point. Gotcha and um, we haven't you know, nailed down a final provider yet. Uh, but we do have to cook the terrain that we get, raw terrain from the provider, into a format that's usable on our displays. And you know, we pass that terrain to the graphics processor and manipulate it to give you this three-dimensional terrain. And then there's obviously a lot of um, you know, making sure the terrain is accurate and correct, and that's a lot where the testing and the flight testing comes into play to make sure that we're putting up a mountain where it's supposed to be and that we haven't lost any of that accuracy when cooking the data from the provider and displaying it on the screen. 
Well, where do you go from here? I mean, you, you've obviously made a tremendous amount of uh, progress on this, but we're still, I, I guess we're looking at the end of the year, next year before this uh, process is complete. And of course, that's depending on the whims of the great gods at the FAA. But what does this process look like from here on out as far as the future development and final certification? Right, so as you know, um, you know we're working on our autopilot. That's the, the main focus of the company right now, um, the DFC 90 and the DFC 100. And this is a very uh, short step beyond that. And you know, there's a huge amount of DO-178B and DO-254 process that goes along with certifying anything related to the FAA. And um, you know, we're in the midst of that. Avidine knows how to do it. We've got to turn the crank. There's a little bit more software improvements that we need on the actual software itself. Uh, and then it's just, like I said, doing the, uh, the certification and the FAA part of it. Um, there will be an FAA evaluation and flight test of the synthetic vision. We do expect that. And uh, you know, that's just another one of those wickets we have to get through to, uh, to get this thing out into the public and certified. How much will you apply a system like this in testing? As much as we can. Um, it, when really, about as much as uh, we feel confident in the, uh, the system and the data and the representation and the user interface as well. Um, so on average, probably something like this, you know, in the order of maybe 100 hours of flight test is, uh, is probably adequate. But it all comes down to, you know, when we get in there and, and how good it is the first time we fly and then, you know, what kind of modifications we need to do, do over time. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidine's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. You're under an additional pressure of sorts. I mean, you, you pioneered R9 to be an easy solution to a number of complex issues. What does the R9 solution for synthetic vision offer that may be different from others? I'd say what it does offer, it adds to or fits in very well into the existing user interface. You still have the redundancy of the displays, you still have the ability to, to put other information below your synthetic vision or you can have the full size display. It's really up to the pilot. Some pilots out there don't feel that synthetic vision is a real big benefit to you know, added safety in your cockpit. Other pilots swear on it, that's the best thing that's ever happened to, uh, to glass cockpits. Um, so what this adds to R9 is um, you know, just an increased awareness of your terrain environment, especially when you're in weather and in IFR conditions. There's no question that more information means more safety, uh, especially once you have the time uh, and the capability and the time and grade actually to really get comfortable with the system and interpret its nuances but uh, coupled with a system that already makes the flying task so much easier because of, of an absolutely ingenious methodology, we're very excited to see what you come up with at the time of certification. Yeah, so we, um, we, <laughs> we, you know, we know what the plan is, and um, you know, we continue to, to modify the plan, and um, you know, if something is put up on the screen that isn't quite right, we'll take the time to go back and fix it and make it as safe and as usable as possible. And then there's some other things that, innovative things that we're going to represent that I'm not talking about today, but that you'll see as this gets closer and closer to the finish line. Very good. We thank you so much.